Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to a new episode within my Azure Arc Deep Dive series. We have covered a few topics already and we're kind of getting into the, the bulk of the content now. Um, we've kind of done an overview of the resource page and some demos around that. And today we're actually going to start the subtopic of the Azure Arc Enable servers. Then we'll move on to other things like Kubernetes and, and, and so on. So we're kind of moving through all that list of the different services that are enabled. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with today's episode. So this is part one of the Azure Rack Enabled Servers sort of subtopics, two-parter. So we're gonna have two, two videos on this topic. Um, and today's agenda, essentially we're gonna talk about Azure Rack Enabled Server, do a bit of an overview. Um, and then we'll talk about Connected Machine Agent Overview and then we'll look at the Azure, um, the, basically the AMA deployment agents, which is that that uh, machine agent basically that we've spoken about or that we're going to be speaking about. Before that, we'll look at the sort of deployment options. Also got a demo. So we'll do a little cool demo around um, creating a virtual machine within vCenter, but from Azure Arc. So that should be quite cool. So let's talk about Azure Arc enabled service. So a bit of an overview first. So um, this essentially lets you manage Windows and Linux physical servers and virtual servers that are hosted outside of Azure on your corporate network or another sort of cloud provider. For the purposes of Azure Arc, uh, these machines hosted outside of Azure are considered hybrid machines. And the management of the hybrid machines in Azure Arc is designed to be consistent with how you, you manage your native Azure VMs uh, using the sort of st standard sort of Azure constructs uh, so, such as, you know, uh, the Azure policy, applying tags and uh, et cetera. Um, so sticking with this topic of the sort of overview, um, when, it, when a hybrid machine, so we're calling it hybrid machines, I've just mentioned, uh, and when these hybrid machines are connected to Azure, it becomes sort of a connected machine and it's treated as an Azure resource then. And each connected machine has a resource ID, uh, enabling that machine to be included in any different resource, whatever resource group you want, essentially. So you can manage it the same way you'd manage your Azure VMs. So to connect hybrid machines to Azure, you install the Azure Connected Machine Agent on each machine. And this agent doesn't does not so it does not replace the Azure uh, Monitor Agent. Uh, the Azure Monitor Agent for Windows and Linux is required, uh, and, and that's in order to proactively monitor the OS and the workloads used use on the machine uh, to manage the sort of um, using automation runbooks or solutions like Update Management, and to use other sort of uh, Azure services like Microsoft Defender for Cloud as well. Uh, you can install the connected machine agent uh, manually or you can you know, multiple machines at scale using different deployment methods and um, we're going to talk about those shortly depends what scenario sort of works for you and this service this this service also supports azure lighthouse which lets you, you sort of service providers sign into their own tenants and manage subscriptions and resource groups and customers that uh, they have delegated uh, so let's talk about some of the supported uh, cloud operations. So when you connect your machine to Azure Rack Enable servers, you can perform many operational functions just as you would name Azure virtual machines. Um, so let's talk about some of those. So you can govern, so you can assign Azure uh, machine configurations to audit settings inside the machine. Uh, you can protect non-Azure servers with Defender for Cloud or Defender for Endpoint, including uh, Defender for Cloud for sort of threat detection or for vulnerability management as well, and to proactively monitor for sort of potential security threats. Um, Microsoft Friend for Cloud presents the sort of alerts and remediation suggestions from the threats that are detected, and we'll look at that in a demo at some point. You can use Microsoft Sentinel as well to collect security-related events and correlate them with other sort of data sources. Um, you can configure, so you can use Azure Automation for frequent and time-consuming management tasks using PowerShell and Python runbooks. The, this assesses configuration changes for install software, Microsoft services, Windows registry and files, and Linux daemons using sort of the Azure Monitor agent for sort of change tracking inventory. And we'll have a look at some of that change tracking inventory as well at some point in one of the demos. Uh, you can use Azure Update Management as well to manage operating system updates for your Windows and Linux servers. And this can automate onboarding and configuration of a set of sort of Azure services when you use uh, Azure Automation as well. And you can perform post deployment configuration automation tasks using Arc-enabled server VM extensions uh, for your non-Azure Windows and Linux VMs. Uh, 
And last one, there's monitors. You can monitor operating system performance and discover application components to monitor processes and dependencies with other resources using VM Insights. Uh, and you can collect other log sort of data, uh, such as performance data and events uh, from the OS, our, our workloads running on the machine. We've sort of had the Azure monitor agent we've mentioned already. And this data is installed in a log analytics workspace. Um, so let's take a look at some of this is sort of the, the architecture now. So the Azure um, connected machine agent is going to let you manage Windows and Linux machines hosted outside of Azure on your corporate network or other cloud providers, as we've already mentioned. Um, the Azure Connected Agent package contains several logical components that are bundled together. These include the Hybrid Instance Metadata Service, or the HIMDS, and this manages the connection to Azure and the connected machine's uh, Azure identity. You then got the Machine Configure Agent, which provides uh, so a configuration agent, which provides functionality, such as assessing whether the machine complies with sort of required policies and enforcing that compliance as well. Um, there is some sort of behavior that we should really, really know when it comes to Azure policy machine configuration for disconnected machines. And that is an Azure policy assignment that targets disconnected machines is unaffected. Uh, a guest assignment is stored locally for 14 days and within the 14 day period, if that connected machine agent can reconnect to the service, the policy assignment is then reapplied. And assignments are sort of deleted after 14 days and are not reassigned to the machine after that 14 day period. Uh, and the extension agent as well manages the VM extensions, including install, uninstall, and uh, upgrade. Let's talk a little bit about the Arc, uh, Azure Arc proxy now. So this service is responsible for aggregating uh, network traffic from the Azure Connected Machine Agent services and the extensions and deciding where to sort of route that data. Uh, if you're using the Arc Gateway, which is kind of a limited preview at the moment, to simplify your network endpoints, the Azure Arc Proxy service is a local component that forwards network requests via the Arc Gateway instead of that default route. That proxy runs as a network service on Windows and a standard user account, uh, what's called Arc Proxy on Linux. Prior to the Azure Connected Machine Agent version 1.51, this service was disabled uh, by default and should remain sort of disabled unless you're configuring the agent to use the Azure Arc Gateway. Again, that's in limited preview at the moment. With version 1.51 uh, and later, the Arc Proxy service uh, is started by default uh, as it can now determine whether the machine is configured to use Arc Gateway or to communicate directly with the Arc endpoints and behave uh, appropriately as well. Uh, if you're not using the Arc Gateway, you can still choose to disable the Arc Proxy service with, with um, with a PowerShell command, which is, um, I think it's AZCMA uh, agent, uh, config uh, set connection uh, dot type, and then the word direct. Let's talk about some of those AMA deployment agents now. So uh, Azure Monitor supports multiple methods to install the Azure Monitor agent as an extension on the Arc enable servers. And those servers support the Azure VM extension framework, which provides post deployment configuration and automation tasks, enabling you to simplify management of your hybrid machines, just as you, you can with the sort of Azure VMs, uh, the native VMs. The Azure Monitor agent is required if you want to monitor the OS and any workloads running on the machine or, or server using VM insights. Uh, if you want to analyze or alert using Azure Monitor, uh, if you want to perform any sort of security monitoring using Defender for Cloud or Microsoft Sentinel, or if you want to collect inventory and track changes by using the Azure Monitor Agent as well. Um, so let's continue on this AMA deployment topic. You can manage the installation, management, and removal of VM extensions, including the Azure Monitor Agent, from the Azure portal using PowerShell or Azure CLI, or within Azure Resource uh, Manager or ARM template. You can enable the automatic extension upgrade as well, which can automatically update the extensions to the latest version when they're available. The advantages of deploying the extension individually include things like you can be useful for testing purposes, useful if you have a few machines uh, to manage or you're testing with a small subset of servers, or if you want immediate deployment of the extension. Some disadvantages of the extension individual, you know, deploying the extension individually include you've got limited automation, you're not scaling, you're not able to scale to many servers. It doesn't create a DCR, which is a data collection rule. So you must create a DCR separately and associate that with the agent before the data collection begins. 
Uh, let's talk about um, Azure Policy now to deploy AMA. So you can use Azure Policy to deploy the Azure Monitor Agent VM extension at scale to machines in your environment and maintain configuration compliance. The advantages of using Azure Policy is that it reinstalls the extension if it's removed after the policy evaluation, obviously. It identifies and installs the extension when a new Azure Arc enabled server is registered with Azure. Uh, some disadvantages of the Azure Policy method is that you, you, the configure operating system uh, Arc enabled machines to run an Azure Monitor Agent policy only installs the Azure Monitor Agent extension and configures the agent to report to a specified log analytics workspace. Also, standard compliance evaluation cycle is once every 24 hours. So an evaluation scan for a subscription or a resource group uh, can be started with Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, uh, or a call REST API, or by using the Azure Policy Compliance Scan GitHub action. Um, so Azure Automation now, to there's another method that you can use to deploy. So the process uh, automation operating environment in Azure Automation, uh, and it supports, uh, it's got support for PowerShell and Python runbooks. It can help automate that deployment of the Azure Monitor Agent extension at scale. Again, some advantages are that um, you can use a scripted method to automate deployment and configuration using scripting languages uh, that you're familiar with. Uh, run a schedule and you can, uh, can define and control. The authentication is secure to Arc Enable Service from automation account using a managed identity as well, so you've got a bit of extra security there. Some disadvantages are that it requires an automation account, an Azure automation account. It requires authoring and managing runbooks in Azure automation, so a bit more management overhead. And you must create a runbook based on PowerShell or Python, depending on the target OS. So if you're not familiar with either of those, it could be a problem. Okay, we're going to jump into the demo now. So in the demo, obviously we added vCenter already into Azure App, but now we're going to try and create a VM uh, in Azure through that resource bridge. Uh, so please join me in the demo. Welcome back, we're in the demo poll and we, last video, last demo, we added, um, or one of it might have been the last one before, that. anyway, we added vCenter, right? Um, so here is our IT vCenter now, just one thing I thought I should talk about was, um, so what, what I did was, obviously it provisioned, when I did deployed um, and added VMware vCenter into Azure Arc, it deployed a um, virtual machine appliance on the vCenter or, or the VMware uh, infrastructure on premises um, and, and it gives it quite a bit of resources so it gives it 16 uh, gig of ram and i think it's four cp vcpu so trying to be clever i thought you know what i'll shut it down i'll reduce that amount put it down to like four gig and, and two cpu i did that and it totally screwed up my resource bridge um, somehow the network got changed and everything so I, I put it all back together and essentially it's now showing offline it was showing as offline even though it's in a succeeded provision state because it provisioned, but it's showing offline. So just to know, don't mess around with the resource bridge sizing. Just make sure you've got the capacity, which I do. Um, or so my friend George does as he's let me his. Um, in today's video, um, I actually want to do want to add a add a virtual machine from Azure Arc onto on premises. So we're going to Arc. We go to virtual machines, and here we can see we've got all our virtual machines. Um, so most of them are all, they're all either off or they're disabled. Here we go to add. <clears throat> now, a couple of prerequisites actually before I move into that. You need to make sure before you create any virtual machines through Arc that are going to be hosted on premises, make sure you've updated these areas here. So make sure you have enabled the uh, resource where you want to add. So I've, I've, I've added the cluster there. So these are all the ones available. I just enabled the, Z, the ZDN cluster. Uh, make sure you have the relevant templates now <clears throat> when I when I start when I obviously added VMware into here or vCenter I only had the template um, for the appliance which was the which is the uh, uh, resource bridge appliance so I actually converted uh, a virtual machine that I that I was using on premises a Windows one to a template so now that's on there and it's Azure Arc enabled Arc enabled that's the key it has to be Arc enabled same with networks, go into your networking and make sure you have enabled the virtual network you want to use and same with the data stores, make sure you enable, has to say Arc Enable there for you to use it. So now when we go back into virtual machines and when we click on um, add, um, click the resource group, so we've got our Arc RG there. Let's give it a name, IT Geek hyphen demo hyphen, 
call it A. Um, the custom location is all set in stone. You can't change that. And the machine kind is, is virtual machine kind is VMware. But here I've got my resource bridge. Uh, so I've got my resource pool on my cluster. So I want to choose my cluster, my data store. There's one that I enable, the tier three HD one. And here's where you have to you have to select a template now. Just because you select a template, you can actually still override the template defaults, which is the um, RAM and CPU. So I'm going to leave it at two CPU and four gig of RAM. Actually, I'll lie. I'm going to put that down to two zero four eight because we're actually going to. I'm going to delete. I'm going to show you how to delete this VM in a, in a different video. Um, here was where we need to put the local administrative uh, information for the virtual machine that we're creating. And so that here's where you can add the VM extension. So you just enable guest management. I'm going to keep stick with public endpoint. Obviously, in a production environment, you need to lock this down so you use either a proxy server or a private endpoint. Go next. See, so you can add as many disks as you want here. We're going to be going through some management tasks in different uh, videos, so I'm not going to do it here. Make sure you select the relevant network, <clears throat> otherwise, it will use the default that's in the um, template. And here's where you can just put the time zone information. So I'm actually in. Um, where am I? I'm in Australia, but where is it? Is it here? Let's have a look. New Zealand, they're a bit further ahead than us. Brisbane, Perth. Oh, I'm just going to put it down to Brisbane because that's. Oh, there it is. There's a the time zone. Put in your product key, give it a name. Again, you can put all that information, just general information basically to customize your OS. Any tags that you might want to add, and then you can review and create. So this is going to go through the creation process. Let me, let this will take about 34 minutes. It'll take quite a while. So let this complete and then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you this VM in Azure. Okay, so that deployment's done. It took, so the start time was 13.43, about, about 20 minutes. So um, if we go back into Arc, the center, and we go down to virtual machines. We should now see IT Geek Demo A enabled, and that is now actually provisioned in our on-premises. But as I think I mentioned in one of the videos, that this is the, this is the source of truth. Azure is the source of truth. Um, so this is provisioned in in on-premises. I can I can prove that. But if I just go to, you can't see it here. Look, it's not an Azure virtual machine, so it's not part of my virtual machines in Azure. It's it's a vCenter Arc enabled virtual machine. Um, so let me just go back down to it. where is it? There it is. So we're able to manage it. So we're going to do some different management tasks on it as we go along. We're going to delete it as well. Um, but that's what I kind of wanted to show to show how we can provision virtual machines through Arc for to on premises environment. So hopefully you enjoyed that demo. Uh, so there's got a lot more to come. Uh, we're going to focus. I've added VC, so we're going to focus on that managing the answer that and, you know, doing inventories and things like that as well. Um, so I've got some useful links down in the description, got a link to my LinkedIn, so by all means connect with me, add me, any questions you have. Drop me a comment on the video as well if you've got any questions around what I'm showing or if you've got any, any parts that you think you might want to see when it comes to Azure Arc, by all means drop me a comment. Also, I'm going to put the link in to join as a member. My member content is all Microsoft exam based content, so I've got the AZ900, MS900 so far. I've got an associate level SE200. Uh, AZ140 for AVD, AZ700 for networking, loads of stuff there, you know, SC100 for expert level stuff, so there's loads more content coming as we go along as well, and plus I've got my Nerdio series that I'm doing that I started uh, last week, I believe, so um, by all means, make sure you, you know, if you're interested in Microsoft exam content or you are studying towards exams that I've got on there, get joined up as a member, loads of other perks as well that you can get, so thank you for joining me, and until next time, goodbye.